Alright, hey there, uh, this is my fifth tutorial, and this one I'm basically going to do the whole delta turret thing again, but on this time I'm going to simplify it, I'm going to teach you how to do expression chips, and I'm going to do a little bit of trigonometry. And uh, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit uh, more advanced than uh, the previous one, so I'm just going to hurry up and build this real quick, and then what we're going to do from there is what I'm gonna just put everything here hopefully you uh, remember how it's basically just accessing accessing balls then I like a ball socket or what I like to do is um, I did not mean to do that shit um, uh, it's taking forever I probably should have done this before I started whatever this tool and then you get on this corner right 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 click and we got that we got that cool now we need wire stuff target finder I'll just target me um, put that there Accumulator, because I don't know if I can grab it, because I do not know exactly how to put an accumulator into an expression chip. Uh, I'm gonna do the. I'm trying to do the target beacon sensor last, so go ahead and throw the hydraulics in here. Remember, make sure they're not fixed, otherwise they won't. Uh, it, it won't bend. It'll just stay on the one axis you place it on. And it'll make it up move shit. Um, I gotta place a controller. You know what? Let's make it visible. So I can see what we're doing here. I'm in a bad mood, so I'm kinda just rushing through. I'm gonna be all grumpy and just crap and rah, I don't really give a shit. Anyway, yeah, there you go. There's our three things. Now we need a beacon sensor, so go ahead and grab the beacon sensor, put it on the ground, actually. Let's get rid of this, split this, this there, so we only have bearing distance, which is really all we need. Place this down, flat B, um, take out the beacon sensor, make sure it's in the front side, the side that goes up and down. And he, um, I like doing the no collide thing, I should probably should put that tool on my radial menu, but I forgot the code. It's probably really easy to find, but I'm just too damn lazy. The hula girl up there. I don't even know why they made a hula girl. They should have made like a cool little microchip beacon sensor crap thing, because it just kind of throws everything off. Um, so yeah, then you gotta weld it. Make sure you weld it, otherwise that whole little process of straightening it out will be completely lost. And make sure you also wire a target to this thing. It's a little laggy, my bad. Sorry about this. Ah, there it goes. Alright. Now, now we need a thrusters. Actually, output. So it goes target, it goes to output one. There we go. Alright, now we need thrusters. Remember last time, if you remember, what the thrusters are doing is they're putting uh, let me change it back to what I had. There we go. Um, the thrusters, because it goes off the bearing, so the right to the right of this, the beacon sensor, that's positive bearing, and this is negative bearing, so everything goes in uh, this direction. It pushes positive, pulls negative. Remember that. So whenever you place a uh, thruster, make sure it's going in this direction. Or no, in this direction, my bad. It pushes positive and pulls negative. That way, so like I'll put a positive here, and it'll bump, oh, that's way too high. Make sure it's like a low number, like five or seven. And so this positive one's gonna be pushing. And I like putting it back here so it doesn't look like off balance or anything. And if you're really short on thrusters, you can just put one right there at like, put like a 10 thruster like right there. 
and it worked pretty good. It's not as good, but yeah, now now you have it looks better. I, I, I like it better than having one right here, and one, two positives right here. You could also have a, just a negative thruster right here. It's all good. And now we do the expression chip. Yay! The main point of the tutorial. Basically, we will be creating this massive thing of death. And it's really simple. It just I made it look confusing. Let's go ahead and go to new expression. Go ahead and type in whatever you want to name this thing. I already ha I already have one. And then press save or what if you want. This is what's going to appear when you uh, place it, when you scroll over it with your mouse, when it's in the world. Inputs, remember uh, we took the bearing. So we need the bearing so we can get the thrust. Because remember we did the delta and multiplied it. So then output is thrust, and this is pr the, the output's going to be pretty much the same number as, it is going to be the same number as our um, plus and minus chip. So we got thrust is, e is equal to, and in, in parentheses, look at the little frowny face. It's so sad. Anyway, so, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm all like, death, dead, yeah, yeah anyway, yeah. So it's delta of bearing. Delta is the dollar sign, so it's shift four. So delta of bearing times ten. Don't ask me where that ten came from. It just helps increase the value of the bearing, making it more effective. And then uh, space plus space. So then we're adding um, bearing times two. If you remember, this is so right here we have the bearing multiply chip, the the other, and then the, here's the delta multiply chip, the add chip, and here is the delta chip. And now I have to pause real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, now with a stomach full of tacos and Sprite, I'm ready to keep going. I remember where it was. All right, yeah. So now our thrust is going to be the same thing as the add chip as it was last time. And uh, but the one thing, same thing with like happened the the old in the other tutorial, is when you take the delta of something, it doesn't reach zero if the uh, bearing equals zero. Is what it does because it's taking the change in something, so it's going to take whatever the last bearing was and then like from zero. So it's like say if the bearing was six, and then it goes to zero because it died, then the bearing would be then delta would be six, and that means the thrust would be 6 or 60 because it's times 10. So to fix that we gotta go we had to do an if then statement so it's gonna be if bearing you just type bearing it, 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 this is like two equal signs If that's it, a question it's asking it if it happens to be this number that that uh, or sorry that number then uh, you do a then statement which is a dash greater than symbol makes a little arrow and then make sure you put spaces between a lot of things it always helps to put spaces you don't have to a lot of times but I do it helps so then so if bearing is zero then thrust is equal to zero and then behind every after every if then statement with a little arrow sign and all that you need to put a, se a semicolon at the end just to end the line so then you can hit then you hit enter Validate, successfully validated, name it and save it if you want. I'm not going to because I already have it saved. Now, bearing goes to bearing. And thrust should go to thrust. And now if we unfreeze it, there it goes. Ah, sorry. Yeah. See, perfect. Look at that. Bam. All right. So that's just with one thing. Now we have to do the accumulator. And now the accumulator, you, you can just go A goes to elevation and this, but it doesn't seem to be working. There it goes. So yeah, that. So now, so now it pretty much works. But what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, remember the greater the less than sign, so that way when it goes below zero, you don't have to wait for it to get add enough points to where it 
gets above it. See? Yeah. So to fix that, we're going to do that.